So I have to admit, sometimes when I start doing talks, so when I sit there at the beginning and I have my eyes shut, you know, the feeling comes up of what possibly could I talk about? Like, what could I possibly say? Um, I really actually no words come for this subject. And then suddenly at some point speaking happens and I start speaking and then there's listening, but like, what could I possibly say? Your freedom is right here. Everything you look for is this, is what's happening. <laughs> but the, and that's so simple and that's it basically that your freedom is what's happening, is this, is what's manifesting now. Um, it's that which knows itself. Uh, it's not really complicated, it's not full, like, full, full of lots of conceptual ideas. It's not something you have to bend your mind to understand. It's the way it is. It's the way it is. And there comes, if I'm really honest in this moment, there comes absolutely no momentum to talk about it. And this often happens before talks. And I'm just trying to talk it out just to... Um, just to be authentic in my sharing. Um, like even when I do public talks, like this last, last week I was at a festival and there's all these faces looking at me, like all these people waiting for me to speak and I'm sat there and I'm like, hmm. Um, and I don't think it's a fault. Like I don't think that there's something wrong with me or that um, there's something wrong with the way I share. I think it's actually very natural to feel that way because there isn't anything to say about this subject. Like I don't, like when I had that big shift years ago, I never had the inclination to really speak about it. It was more an expression of joy or an expression of love that came through, but there was no inclination, it sounds really weird, to speak about it. Just, it didn't come. I know it sounds super weird that I've done so many talks. And sometimes all I have to do is kickstart myself. So I have to start with a very typical sentence or a very typical statement and that, that gets me going like rum, rum, rum. Um, like starts it up. So like I, I think a typical statement or I think a word or I say something like um, all there is is what's happening and whatever the statement is and it starts up speaking. And I think it's super important that when you're giving a talk, even in giving a talk, even when I work with people one-on-one, -on -one, that you're genuine, as genuine as you can be. I think that's more important than any words that are spoken.
we're often taught in this society that we have to speak. That if you don't speak, um, then you're not being nice or you're not being kind. And one thing I used to love about hanging out with the Buddhists was that, um, was that when I went to the Buddhist center, it was silent and um, the Buddhists were very used to being in silence and sitting in silence and you didn't have to speak if you didn't want to, which I thought was fantastic. Like I was very young when I first started going there, but I used to love being in the break time and just having the option not to speak, that that wasn't seen as rudeness. Whereas in our society, it's often seen as rudeness if you don't keep conversation going all the time. Um, and I have to admit, I don't um, stick to silence. I, I often speak when I don't feel like speaking because of empathy for the other person. Like I feel compassion for the other person. I don't want to make them feel rejected or abandoned. And I can read that um, they need some love and attention and some words to feel comfortable. Um, but I would love it if people um, would feel okay with my silence. Like often when I meet someone, I've got nothing to say. Like I stand there and I've really got nothing to say to them. And um, I don't mean to be rude and I don't dislike them, but there's just, what's there to say? Here we are. And is that okay for you? Like, how do you feel if someone is quiet in front of you? What is silence to you? So much of people's lives is built up around seeking. And what I mean by seeking is the pursuit of pleasure and the avoidance of pain. This constant pursuit of pleasure. That in order to define yourself as happy, you have to be experiencing pleasure. You cannot be happy or you cannot be peaceful if there is pain involved. this constant seeking. Most people spend their, their whole day seeking rather than just a gentle movement towards pleasure and a movement away from pain. That's the way these bodies are set up is that um, you're set up, it navigates itself, the body navigates itself by moving towards pleasure and moving away from that which is painful. In every circumstance you're always attempting to do that. But the, the person believes that the more pleasure I get, the more happiness I'll get, and that one day if I achieve, achieve enough pleasure, I will arrive and I'll be free and I'll be happy. And pleasure can be all types of things. It could be the idea of having kids, the idea of becoming enlightened, the idea of sexuality, the idea of getting a new lover, the idea of getting someone conversation in the moment, like attempting to be liked and loved by the other person. Our natural instinct is to, um, is to get on, so our body moves towards that to get on, to be liked, but then on top of that there's this seeking dynamic that's always seeking to be loved, always seeking to obtain
So in this moment, when you're sitting here watching this video, you're seeking to get something. There might be just a natural movement towards pleasure, but most of the time it's about seeking. So you'll hear these words and you'll arrive, that I'll say something, or I'll do something and you'll arrive, that you'll get a transmission and you'll arrive. But it's all in fantasy. Who is this person that's going to arrive? It's all in fiction this constant separation from what's happening and this reflection, this dividing that's always looking at you and where you are and what you want. And it's so quick. It's happening quicker than you can think about or quicker than you can see. This impulse to impress, this impulse to get love from the other, this impulse to, um, to take something, to have something, to own something. You're never going to achieve it there. You're never going to get what you look for in that. What you look for is actually beyond pain and pleasure. It's beyond the person. It's beyond feeling. It's beyond sensation. What you look for is totally content and doesn't care if you get it or if you don't, if you experience pleasure or pain. It's just experiencing. It's conscious. It's love. It's magic. It's free. The person is always scurrying in itself, always trying to find the solution in itself. On the human level, there's things to do. The body has a mission to eat and to stay alive and to stay connected and stay in society or whatever it chooses to do. But the body has a mission. But what you're actually looking for, what you've always been looking for, is beyond that. It's beyond the body. It's beyond sensation. It's beyond the experience. It's who you truly are. It's actually what's registering everything now. It's that which is conscious. And that consciousness makes up the whole world. It's not that consciousness is something separate from all things. The consciousness is the things. It's a universal consciousness. It's not an individual consciousness. You think that, that you are looking out of your eyes and that you're conscious, but actually there is one consciousness looking out of billions of eyes and it's watching that person experience. And what happens when you're separate is there's an identification, so that consciousness seemingly is identified with the person and then it feels like who you truly are is a person, is a limitation, where actually your essence is infinite. Your essence is expanded, is huge, is free. But that's been forgotten. So when you look at me, most people feel that they are looking at me, that they're a person looking at me, that they're an idea, that they're somebody that's trying to get something, that needs to get something. Whereas actually that's not who's looking. Who's looking is beyond that.
Is there in you, there's a part of you that wants to be special, there's a part of you that wants to get this or wants to understand this, that wants this special story for you, that you want to wake up, that you want to be liberated. But just notice that that's feelings and that's ideas and that's impressions appearing. And that's not who you are. Who you are is beyond that. Who you are isn't in that realm. Who you are is silently watching now, free, and is all things. Still, content. And there's breathing happening, and there's hearing happening, and there's feelings happening, and there's emotions happening. And beyond that, there's experiencing happening. There is something experiencing all of that. But what the mind identifies with is the feelings, is the sensations, is the emotions, is the thoughts, is the ideas. That's who I am. I'm conscious. I'm alive. But there's not actually anybody that's alive. Who is alive? Who is looking out of your eyes? Who's experiencing now? Who? 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 Who do you think you are? You see the speaking's begun to happen now, and now it's effortless. But in the beginning, it's like I need encouragement to get it going. That's funny. Well, this is magic. This is really, truly wonderful. It doesn't sound wonderful to the person because the person wants to be something special. It wants to be an imagination of itself. So it wants to be somebody that achieves enlightenment or achieves a nirvana or somebody that's free or somebody that's happy. It can't imagine that there's something else watching, that this is nothing to do with you. There's something watching that's so free and infinite and just doesn't care on the human level. So there's talking happening, but there's absolutely stillness at the same time. There's something that's still, that doesn't move, that knows. And it's one consciousness looking through all these eyes. So when you go and speak to someone, you're actually speaking to the same consciousness, that same love, that same intimacy.
you are here, right here, right now, in this. You're not your thoughts going past, you're not your ideas of what you need, you're not your problems. You're not your sensation of your bum on the seat. But it's in that that you disappear, it's in that. Right in the middle of the sensation, there you are. You could say there is a watching of that, that's so still and free. And it's not separate from all that's happening, that watching is all things. There isn't a consciousness that's separate from things. So it's like everything that's happening is still and watching itself and not separate from itself. And all human suffering comes from the illusion that you're somebody moving in time, that you're a name, that you're an identity, that you're someone that was born and will die at age 80 and that you've got this life in between. That this life has to have happy times, you have to accomplish certain things, you have to do certain things, you have to be a certain thing. And that's not true. You're a human being, not a human doer. All that was ever asked was for this to be experienced. For it to be watched. Suffering comes when you identify with your pain and pleasure and you believe that that pleasure will one day lead you to freedom. Freedom isn't pleasure. Pleasure is an experience that comes and goes. Freedom isn't love, isn't intimacy, isn't sexuality, isn't orgasm. Freedom is this innocence that you could call love that's right here, that's watching silently, that's never judging anything, that's holding everything. And you get bogged down with life and you forget the magic because you're bogged down in you and what you believe you have to be. That you have to be really rich or really successful and that you have to do certain things and you stop trusting life and you begin to fight life. You begin to try and swim upstream because you think that life is against you when who you are is this life. And then it disbalances your chakra system. Your emotional, your emotional body comes off center because you're always telling yourself that there is a problem and me as a human needs to fix this problem. But the problem is the identification with the human. It's not actually anything that's happening. Life can be cruel and it can do create lots of pleasure and lots of pain, but that's not inherently the problem. The problem is the identification with the person that goes through that. You naturally can deal with the traumas and the difficulties of life, like all animals are designed to be able to deal with them. What you can't deal with is the identification with the person and believe the belief that life is happening to you. It's too scary, it's too overwhelming. No other animal feels like that. They're totally connected and centered in who they are. They just don't know who they are, like we can know who we are, but they're totally free. There is nobody that's suffering in there. They don't identify with form. They don't identify with their face and think, oh, I'm a dog or I'm a sheep. They don't know about that. They just are in every moment experiencing free and it comes and it goes and it appears and it disappears. And it's deeply relaxing that movement back to self. It's an energetic shift. And it's deeply relaxing because when you're too invested in your feelings, like that's all that's important. So if you feel bad, that's all that's important. You feel bad. Whereas when it's see it as this energetic shift, then your 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 feeling is that you're empty, that there's nothing that's that's that this is attaching to, there's nothing that's that's being hurt. And then the way that that translates into the human form is a movement easily from feeling to feeling and experience to fe- experience the human form becomes less attached to experience and to its feelings.
Okay. You can begin to ask questions if you have any.